or possibly afternoon, depending on where you're from. It looks like we got the chat going already, and we got people from everywhere today. That's awesome. Welcome to the Guitar Show. Jeff Duke here in the Your Guitar Sage studio, doing another takeover. Happy to be back, and uh, today we're going to have a lot more fun. And we're going to start off today with a little bit of a picking lesson, one of my favorite things. And I love to alternate pick pretty much everything. It just kind of turned out that way, but I love the sound of it. I love the attack. Um, so what I thought we could do is start off with an easy way to improve your accuracy. And I'm going to keep an eye on the question, so you guys just keep that chat going and uh, we'll get into that. But what I thought we would do to get started with alternate picking and improve the accuracy of it is just take a standard bar chord and uh, let's say an A chord, just a regular old A chord. And we want to get accurate in any facility. So one string, two strings, five strings, two notes on a string, one note, any, any combination of anything, we want to be able to, to pick around it. So here's what I like to do to practice something to get my alternate picking in shape. Is we have the full chord. Let's start with just the top two strings. So the first string, the high E, and the second string, B. And I'm just going to have my first finger barred over the fifth fret. And so what I'll do is I'll just sit with that and alternate pick that, meaning down up. So I'll do a down on the B string and an up on the first string, the E string. And so just sit with that, get a metronome, get it slow, and then you can build the speed up as you get it. But just make sure it's clean and that you're, you're going to each string and it's very clean going back and forth. So here's just, just a start. So that's really basic and really easy, but that's the first step that I would take in taking that full A chord into some alternate picking to get some accuracy. The next thing I would do is with every set of strings that I go to is I would do it up like that, but I would also do it the opposite way so that I get both sides of it. So instead of going from the second string to the first string, I would go first string to second string. Now the other day, we put up a quick tip on inside and outside picking. So really quick, what that means is outside means that the pick is on the outside of each string. So I'm doing a down on the second string and an up on the first string. So I'm outside. But when I switch to a down on the first string and an up on the second string, I'm inside the two strings. So my pick is literally just bouncing back and forth caught between those two strings with a down and then an up on the second string. So I won't show every possible combination, but whatever I do show, just take it up and then go the opposite way as well so that your pick can pretty much tackle anything. So we got that. Then the next thing we would do is take our third string and in the full big full A chord, it's going to be the C sharp. So we're going to have our first finger still barring those top two, and I'll take my second finger and put it on the C sharp. So now I have this. So now picking wise, there's a couple different ways you could do it. The first way would just be able to take triplets, which is just three notes in a beat, and alternate pick through the three strings and then go back. Now, since it's an odd group, every time you come back to this third string, it's going to alternate between a down and an up because you're on an uneven number of strokes. So this is the first way you could do it. Now, if you wanted to make it an even number, keep the same thing, just instead of doing triplets, do eighth notes or sixteenth notes, and you would go and come back to that second string on the way back. So now, every time you hit that third string, it's going to be on a down because you have an equal number of pick strokes instead of three. So I would practice, again, both with triplets and with sixteenth notes. 
And then same thing, instead of going from the third string to the first string, go from the first string back. Now, the biggest thing, and as you add more strings to this exercise, it's gonna be even more important that when you're skipping a string, you're not getting any noise from that string. So you don't want the pick to catch like on the way back like that, you just wanna skip it. You want to be able to skip that string no matter how fast you're going to pick. So that's why it's really important to start all these really slow and get it clean, get the technique right, get the feel, and then you slowly build up the speed. So now we're going to add the fourth string into the mix. So I still got this shape, then I'm going to add my third finger on the seventh fret A, which is our root note, and now I'll have an, a full A chord on those four strings. So again, you could just do the four notes and keep it all the way up, alternate picking, and you'd have eighth notes or sixteenth notes, anything even like that will work great. And then you can come back. The other thing is you could add the two extra notes in it and you could have triplets, so you'd have three going up, and then three coming back, so that could be another set of rhythms and it could be um, another picking challenge too, because you want to be able to take any of these and be able to turn it into an exercise so that no matter when you're picking through a song or a lick or you're trying to write your own songs and you're trying to get out what's in your head, you want to have all the tools and the techniques to be able to get it all out. So any exercise that kind of makes you have to slow down and think is one of my favorite things to do because it helps you build some things that you didn't have before technique wise. So doing triplets, you could get another set on this four strings. And then again, go backwards. Oops. So there's that. Then, instead of keeping this shape, when I go to the five string set, is I'm gonna take my third finger and move it down to the fifth string, still seventh fret, and put my pinky on the fourth string where my third finger was. So now I have five string set. Same thing, just alternate pick up and back. And then the last thing would be completing the A chord by just barring your first finger across everything. And again, I just like to emphasize the fact that, especially when you're going to six strings like this, you're going to want to really slow it down. Because you're going to have a lot of different strings passing, you're going to have a lot of notes ringing out, and you want to make sure they're all clean and that the pick is attacking every string equally. And then go up and back with that. So that's the first part of that exercise. And I know that seems like a huge chunk, but even if just say for the first week or two, you just concentrated on the top two, or even just the top three, um, and just take it in little chunks. Now, not to get off track, but to make it a little more interesting, if you wanted to just say, take a full week with just the first two strings, you wouldn't have to just stay there, make a little um, exercise or, you know, kind of like an etude out of it, something to make it a little interesting and move it around, but just make sure that pick is staying on those two strings. So you could do something simple like just add notes on the, on the first string just to give it a little uh, musicality. So something like that, just make kind of your own little exercises out of it, but just keep the principal picking exercise the same. So that's the first part of the lesson that I wanted to start with. The next part of it that's really going to improve your accuracy is now we're going to stick with this A chord, 
But instead of just going from string to string, practice skipping strings. So that's really gonna up your game picking wise. So let's say we just have these two notes, the first three notes of the chord that we looked at. But instead of the second string being in there, we're gonna work on two notes just skipping the string. So we're gonna have the third string and the first string. So now you're gonna skip the second string completely. So when you're doing this, you're not gonna to wanna to hear any noise or any kind of fretted note or anything from that second string. So the first thing is you're gonna to wanna to start slow and make sure you're skipping it. Which is especially important that when you're doing an upstroke here and then skipping to come back to the third string to do Welcome back, folks. Looks like we're back on uh, live stream YouTube here. So, where was I? I don't remember, but I think we finished the lesson on that. And if you guys have any questions on the alternate picking or the accuracy or anything like that, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm going back now and looking through the comments, seeing if we have any questions, seeing what the chat's all about. And a um, little quick side note, in the link, uh, there's a link in the description of this uh, video. I did a course on speed picking and there's a free lesson in the description. There's a link to a free lesson. And I tried to put together a course that would help you increase not only just the speed, which is a big part of the course, but also the accuracy like we just talked about here. So I tried to make a course where you could increase your accuracy increase your speed, and slowly build yourself up no matter what level you're at. Hopefully there's something for everyone. But there is a free uh, link in the description to a little segment from that um, lesson plan on how to build your speed. So check that out and uh, let us know what you think. So now that we're back, I'm going through some of the questions here. And the first one I see is Michael D said, are you anchoring your little finger on the pick guard? Uh, good question. Let me go back to what I was playing. Yeah, I guess maybe a little bit. Um, sometimes I think I anchor it even on the pickup ring. So same thing. Um, I do sometimes, I guess. Maybe not all the time. Uh, let's see. Yeah, sometimes I think maybe when I get into some of that um, chordal stuff where I'm picking around. Yeah, I think I am sometimes. Um, good question. I guess I don't, I don't really think about that, but when I have to, then I gotta really think about it. Let's see, do, do, do. What else we got here? These exercises look daunting, but get easier with practice. I agree 100%, and that's why I tried to uh, break it down so that when you start the exercise, it's really simple and it's only two strings. So really when you start it, I don't know if I could make it uh, any easier, um, but you start with two strings and then as you really get that down, then you add the third string and the fourth string and then you start string skipping. And even another thing you could do to um, make it even more interesting is double up or maybe double up only on one string. So. Say if I had um, just the just the two. Let's just start with the two. What if I doubled up on both of those? Or what if I just doubled up on the second string? Well, that's a good one. I had to think about that for a second. So you'd be really doing a pick workout that way. So try any combination of not only just picking 
the note once on each string, but now you could pick it as many times as you want, but maybe double up to get even more practice. Something that would be really weird is if you did this, but you doubled up on the third string, the middle string, that would be kind of weird. So that's something, um, I might even go home and practice that. So just think of any possible combination of notes, strings, um, the amount of times you're picking a string, any of that will uh, really increase your accuracy and it'll increase your speed in the process too. But again, just start slow. Uh, let's see. Do, do. Uh, does anyone else accidentally fall back into economy picking? I have to concentrate on up, down, up, down. See, now that's one of the things that I really believe that just do what comes naturally to you. There are things that are good to practice, and I like to find things that are a little tricky for me to play, so I have to slow it down and practice. But let's say you had just a lick, or just even just what we were just talking about, just an A, and you did down, down, up instead of alternate. That's not natural for me, just because I've never practiced it that way. I've always practiced alternate, but for you, if that's comfortable and you could get the idea out, I think that it shouldn't matter. Basically, when I'm playing in a live situation, I don't wanna have to think about what I'm playing because first of all, I'll take my energy right out of the show because I'll be really thinking and I won't be in the music. I just wanna play what's gonna come natural. So when I'm practicing, I do the same thing. Is for me, it's natural to alternate pick everything. I just... But for you, if it's natural to economy pick that and do, for me, that's not natural at all. But if it is natural for you, I would almost say you could practice the alternate picking just for a new spin or to, to gain some uh, technique. But uh, overall, I would keep what's comfortable to you and build that up. So I hope that helped. Um, I'm scrolling down. So you guys keep the questions. We are back. Let's see. Uh -huh. Okay, I think I'm getting back to live questions. Uh, yeah, so we do have that link someone mentioned, um, UGS. I will have a course coming out there. We do, like I said, have in the description of this, we have a link to a small snippet lesson that you guys can get for free. And I hope you enjoy that. I really had fun making it. And I hope, you know, I tried to give as much content as I could to help, help everyone build speed and accuracy. Uh, my question is picking while strumming. Sometimes I'll forget where I am during the strum. Uh, yeah, that's okay. I mean, uh, for me, um, rhythm playing, I like to, I never was one to just, strum the chords. I know there's songs that call for that and, you know, acoustic things, but I like to make um, my rhythm playing interesting. Like if I'm just doing an A, instead of maybe just strumming that A, you know, maybe do a little bit of strumming and then pick or add a different rhythm or arpeggiate the chord a little bit. Uh, things like that I like to do a lot, uh, just to mix up the strumming you know, so it's not so monotonous and I can make it interesting for myself, but I think it adds a little bit to the song. So maybe think of it, what I like to do is think of when the singer is singing, maybe I keep it a little more simple. And then when there's um, a little bit of a break or something, maybe I'll arpeggiate or do a, the chord in a different position um, or do an inversion or something like that just to make it a little more interesting. <laughs> You know, just to kind of break it up. So yeah, um, picking while strumming uh, is something I really like to do. I think it adds a lot to it. Uh, let's see. Eric, good to see you. Can't wait till you're back. We missed you, Eric. But I'm glad, uh, I'm glad I'm able to do this. And safe travels. And when you get back, we got lots to teach and do. 
slide course. Yeah, the slide course is out. RJ's slide course. That's going to be great. I'm going to get that one. Can I use power cords while picking? Absolutely. Um, I, this is just one thing that I thought was an easy way to demonstrate uh, accuracy and alternate picking. I would definitely do power cords because by nature, I'm more of a rock guy. So I would probably have a little bit of dirt going and some power cords anyways. So if I had like um, just kind of a little bit of an overdriven sound, I'd probably want to do some kind of power cord um, thing anyways, because with, with a little bit of dirt, a full cord's just going to sound like mush. So that's just going to get lost. So yeah, I would do a power cord for sure. And maybe just take, uh, find a progression you like for a power cord and pick around that progression and just take that. Something like that might be cool. So yeah, I encourage power chords. I love power chords. So you answer your question, yes, I would definitely use power chords while picking. Uh, is alternate picking a style or is it the correct way? So Barry, that's a great question. And I kind of touched on that with um, the other question where we were talking about um, economy picking uh, was more natural for somebody else. And alternate picking, there is no correct way. Let me say it that way. There are suggestions and when I teach, and it seems like when I watch other people's lessons and I try to gain something from that is I try to take the idea of what they're doing maybe than more so than the exact way they're doing it. So alternate picking is definitely not the correct way. It's my way just because that's how I naturally play and how I like to play. I like the sound of it. Um, I like the attack and everything like that. But if there's a different way for you, like say economy picking, um, I fully encourage you doing it, whatever comes natural to you. Um, there is no right or wrong way. Guitar is not um, a concrete, there's no book that says this is the way to play guitar. I think everything instructional wise that is out there is a guide and take everything and, and make it your own and that's what gives everyone their own voice. So no, there is no correct way. Now in saying that, I do like taking things that are unnatural to me, like economy picking is probably is really unnatural to me. So that's something that maybe down the line I'd wanna sit with and really play with it just to build a different technique that maybe I didn't have before but I might not ever use it in a practical sense, but it'll kind of give me a different perspective and different tools maybe. So no, there is no, there is no correct way. Um, and it is just a style. Are you palm muting? I'm not hearing the strings ring. Yeah, um, I do palm mute a lot, especially again, when I have a little bit of gain going, because if I didn't, it would be an awful ringing mess. Uh, with, with, so I just, if I just kick a little bit of dirt on, and I just had just that power chord with some gain, it would sound awfully mushy. Might kind of be cool, but I like to rein it in. Um, and I'm always thinking in terms of the song, especially when you're playing underneath a singer, is you kind of want to tighten that up. Now, on the other hand, uh, so I am palm muting, yes. Um, on the other hand, if you were doing like some kind of uh, little more uh, pretty kind of arpeggiated A chord like we were talking about, maybe you want that to ring a little bit. So I am palm muting most of the time, yes, but I would even encourage you to do it you know, maybe with a more of a clean tone is don't palm mute and let it ring because you get a lot of really beautiful chord voicings and things like that, that, you know, ring into each other. Almost like using the sustain pedal on a piano is they They don't have their foot on it all the time, but they use it to kind of build chords and um, let some notes ring out. Uh, so that's that question. 
Uh, HF arpeggios, I tend to pick. I tend to pick down to the B and then up on the high E. And that's fine. Yeah, again, whatever comes natural, I, I agree. Um, I just do alternate picking no matter what the situation. So if I find myself, you know, going... If I'm coming back, let's say, and I'm starting on an up on my fourth string, if I'm just picking a four string arpeggio, and I'm coming back on a down the first time, great. But if I had an odd group and I came back on an upstroke, that's great too. So I don't, I don't discriminate saying I always have to hit this note on an upstroke or this note on a downstroke. I just take it as alternate picking and whatever string I land on, um, it's the next stroke. But again, whatever works for you, that's great. Uh, starting on the upstroke, why and when? Uh, just, just like we just talked about is I just do strict alternate. So uh, if you're thinking in terms of eighth notes, um, my downstroke is always on the beat and my upstroke is always on the and of the beat. So one and two and three and four and. So no matter where I am, whenever I hit a beat, a downbeat, is I'm always doing a downstroke or maybe 99% of the time. But I always do a downstroke on the beat and then upstrokes off the beat. So that's how I always do it. Uh, think so much, think so good. When forming a band, who's responsible for all the PA sound equipment? Well, good question. Um, whoever feels like carrying it around and setting it up? Um, no, I, that's such a tough question. Usually, um, or any of the bands that I've formed, either someone already has it, or you just hire out a sound guy, or the club has sound. So one of those three options, um, usually if the club has it, that's probably everyone's preferred method because you just show up with your own gear, plug in, and they get you going. Uh, or someone in the band will have it. I've never been a part of a situation where we got together and we had nothing and we all said, well, let's all buy a PA together because first of all, if the band breaks up, what are you gonna do? You're gonna take one speaker and that guy's gonna take the cables and um, maybe. But yeah, I would say uh, that's a situation by situation question, but those are the three things that I would think is either you hire a sound guy and nobody worries about it and you just pay for it. The club is gonna have it, which is my preferred method, or someone in the band is gonna own a full PA and either um, they go and set up early and you throw them a few extra bucks for the extra work or everyone comes and helps. Uh, but that's, that's my thoughts on that. Mm -mm -mm. What else we got? What are my favorite guitar jokes? Let me think on that. Let's come back to that. I can't think of any uh, right now. I know there's a lot. Uh, let's see. Bands never have money for PA equipment. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, hiring a sound guy usually is a, a good option if you don't have it. So um, going back to the picking and the accuracy, and I'm going to keep an eye on the chat. You guys have any questions um, on picking anything really? Um, just, I'm going to keep an eye on it and I love having the chat with you guys. So keep that going. But the picking thing now, what you could do is take it to different chords. So instead of just staying on the A chord, because it's not going to have that much of, um, a musicality to it. I mean, it'll be an A chord, so it'd be nice, but you can probably only pick around an A chord so much without getting bored. So maybe take that A chord and this will really kind of up the game a little bit is maybe then you go to a D bar chord on the next set. And so now you have a whole different set of strings to kind of pick through. So make an exercise out of it and come up with a chord progression that you like or even just take a song that you already know and just kind of take that chord progression and make it into a picking exercise. 
Um, but maybe just take a, to practice it, take a picking pattern and stick with that for the whole time and then move it around to chords because obviously in a practical situation when you're playing a song, you're going to be moving chords around the whole song. So you want to practice picking around while you're moving the chords. So something that could be really uh, basic might be... kind of like a one, four, five thing. Um, or you could do like, um, what might be cool is like those old 50s progressions. Something like that might be cool. But anyways, I'm just kind of amusing myself. I would take a progression and take a picking pattern and pick around it and then you could kind of make it a little more interesting rather than just sitting there and picking three strings over and over is make an exercise out of it and maybe just take that'd be cool just thought of that if you took like um, just like a on the fourth string third string and second string just stay do an a e d now I'm doing that basic A chord we looked at before. Uh, this E would be considered a first inversion because I'm starting on the third. So I'd have my third finger on the sixth fret of the fourth string, first finger on the fourth fret of the third string, and my second finger on the fifth fret of the second string. And then just slide that shape down one whole step to D, and then back up. Maybe take that's a cool little thing. So again, just kind of, um, you know, make it your own and kind of fool around with some different chord changes and you could still get the practice in, but make it a little more musical. Again, like an etude or something like that, uh, where you can practice a certain technique, but almost make a song out of it as to make it a little more interesting. Uh, let's see, we got some more chat going. Let's see what we got for you guys. Do you have a preferred pick thickness for picking? Uh, good question, Mike. And again, this is going to be everybody's gonna have their own thing. I like a fairly thick pick. Um, these ones that I use are 1.26 in thickness and they're, I've tried 1.5, that's a little too thick for me, um, but 1.26 or somewhere in that 1.2 area seems really good for me where I don't really have barely a little flex, but when I'm picking, I don't. Uh, what I, and, and I don't switch, some guys I know when they go to acoustic guitar or they go to strumming is they'll switch to a fairly light gauge pick for strumming. I can't use a light gauge pick for any application. I just, I can't take that give. It just, I just don't like it. So I'm always using a, a fairly thick pick around 1.2. And uh, what that does for me is it gives me total control because this pick is not gonna give at all. So when I'm alternate picking, it's not gonna bend, it's not gonna flex. And it may sound uh, minuscule, but when I'm doing um, some faster picking and things like that, um, I don't wanna have that point where the pick hits the string and then it almost bends a little bit, it gives, because I think that would kinda slow me up just the slightest bit, um, and it just doesn't work for me. So pick thickness for me is pretty thick. Um, I wanna say uh, Ingve Malmsteen uses like uh, I think I've seen one of his picks one time, um, maybe even 1.5 or even heavier, but his are super thick. I can't, I can't even believe it. But anyways, I like them um, pretty thick and I don't change. I always use the same pick, whether I'm playing acoustic, electric, I'm strumming, um, picking. It's always the same pick and I like it uh, very thick. A uh, little side note, same thing for my strings. I use 11 to 50 just because I like, um, I don't like the strings to be very, again, have much give. So when I'm bending and things like that, I've tried to play with tens or even um, nines on some other people's guitars. I end up bending like way sharp, probably because I'm used to the 11s, but I just like the thickness and I don't like the give because using the thick pick is I pick fairly hard. 
So if I had um, a thinner pick, it would give a lot. And if I had thinner strings, I would push those sharp um, because the harder you pick, you're gonna push that string a little sharp. So this way with a thick pick and thick strings, I can kind of dig in, which I, I tend to play that way. So that is my preferred pick thickness. Great question. Um, I like that. Uh, you guys got some good questions here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. You guys got a good chat going. Um, the PA, yeah, that's, I mean, I would hate to get into that discussion with a band and try to get money out of everybody. I play light picks, but I choke up so it's stiffer. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Again, everyone has their own thing, so that, if that works for you, that's cool. I, if you mentioned it, I tend to have, I guess maybe half the pick sticking out. Like I don't get real close up to the tip and I just use like a standard size. Um, these are Clayton picks, but um, I just use a standard, you know, standard pick size. They're not like a jazz size or anything like that. And I tend to leave a lot of it hanging out, I guess, now that you mentioned it. Again, to each their own. So um, that's cool. Dunlop Jazz 3 XL Nylons, they're like 1.4-ish. Okay, the Jazz 3s, um, those are like the littler ones, like the mini ones. I think I, I used to try those, but I, I always tend to, they're so small that I would just end up more so with the pick, is I would hit my fingers on the string because I didn't have that much pick to grab onto. But again, I know a lot of guys love those Jazz 3s. Some use picks made of metal and stone. I've tried a metal pick, actually it's very bright and brash. It could have an application, uh, but maybe not all the time. So, you guys keep that chat going. Again, I'm gonna keep going through um, some picking accuracy things that I really like to work on. And uh, again, in the description to this, there's a link to a little bit of a, um, a speed picking uh, snippet from a course I did that will be available soon. And check that out. It's um, hopefully it'll help you incre increase your speed uh, and also accuracy. Uh, do you work on single finger exercises? I do ring and pinky only for a few runs. It really helps. Joe, that's a really good idea. And yes, I do. Not a lot. Probably not as much as I should. Um, single finger exercises. A couple of them that I like to do are um, take, say, Let's just say, everyone knows the one, two, three, four, obviously, right? We've all done that probably a million times, and I still do that every day. I just, I love it. But what if you broke that down into something that was a little more uncomfortable to play, something that you're not used to a lot? And let's say, let me give you three different variations on that exercise that might give your left hand a little bit of a twist. What if you broke it down to just two fingers instead of four, so you could obviously just do one, two, or one, three, or one, four, but what if you did like an odd group that maybe you never played with, like two and four? Might be kind of weird. So try something like that, and this way you're playing with two and four, you probably hardly ever are gonna do that in a run because your first finger is gonna to try to lead every time, but that's something that's a little awkward and just going from your second finger to your fourth finger without using your first and your third finger, which might even be your strongest fingers. It's kind of weird, but I like it. And it's something that might feel a little awkward at first, but once you get under your fingers, again, it's just gonna, it's just gonna build your toolbox and you wanna have as many tools as you can so that when you come across an idea or something you want to play or even something that's in your head that you want to get out. You want to have all the tools to be able to build it. So yeah, um, I do work on single finger exercises. Again, probably not as much as I should, but it's a great idea and mess around with something like that. So that's the first one I would do for kind of single finger exercises that are maybe a little awkward. <laughs> And again, I, I come up and back on anything I do just because you want to have both sides of the coin. You don't want to just be able to play up the neck and not down the neck. So that's the first thing. The next thing you could try and do is we're going to stick with, well, let's do one and three. 
So what if instead of doing one and three, what if you did one on the sixth string and three on the fifth string? power chord, but what if you did that all the way up the neck and then 3-1 on the way back? So now you're really going to be giving your right hand to work out. Your pick's going to be going across the strings big time instead of just up and down, up and down. So I go down, up. So that's a good picking exercise. And again, you're doing the basic power chord shape up and then reverse it coming back. But now your pick is alternating every string and you're going back and forth. So that's going to help with speed, it's going to help with right hand accuracy, and it's also going to help uh, get your left hand into some, again, maybe a little bit more awkward positions so that you're loosen up to play any kind of thing that'll come across. So try that and again, do it with any set of uh, two fingers or even the one, two, three, four pattern, you can alternate between strings. So instead of just what if you did so I'm going one and then two and then back so I'm alternating between two sets of strings so sixth string to fifth string alternate picking and alternating my fingering Same thing coming back, you're just going to start on your pinky. So that's the third way you could kind of break out. Um, so I hope that answered your question, uh, Joe. Is Those are some things that might be a little awkward that I think would help um, break out some accuracy, but also build your left hand to get in some uncomfortable situations so that later on you're never at a point where you're stumbling to play through something because you've never practiced uh, that way. Let's see, I think I missed a few here. Uh, yeah, you guys are all talking about the picks. Cool, yeah, and, and again, everyone has their own thing, so whatever you do. You're welcome, Joe. Yeah, two finger runs, those are great too. Again, any combination that you can do, um, there's unlimited combinations. So even if I took the one, two, three, four, but I didn't do one, two, three, four, um, this is kind of an unlimited thing where you can make so many combinations. But let's say I did, instead of that, if I did three, four, one, two. Well, that's a little weird. And you probably can't do it as fast as one, three, three, four, but do that all the way up and down the neck. And then I come back. It's a little weird. So just, you know, mix it up and, and get some different fingerings in there. It's easy, and I do the same thing when I practice. It's easy to practice things that you're already pretty competent at um, because it feels good to be able to, to master something and then just be able to play it at will. It can be a little frustrating to practice something that you're not used to at all, but that's kind of the fun and that's how you get better. So I recommend, you know, obviously play things that you're good at because it's fun and it makes you feel good about your playing and gives you some confidence. But then maybe every, every day or every time you sit down to practice, throw one little wrinkle in there uh, to give you something new that maybe you didn't, didn't have before. Uh, wow, you guys got a great check on. Uh, let's see, what did I miss here? What did I miss? What did I miss? String skipping as well. Yeah, string skipping, we talked about that at the beginning, um, doing some pick, uh, string skipping pick things. There's so many different things you could do, and that's great, Joe. Um, a lot of really great ideas there. Uh, a lot of picks. Use a quarter to scratch the strings. Yeah, that is cool. Do you teach how to do knee slides on stage? Um, I never have. I guess let me practice for a little while. I'll start real slow and I'll build it up. Uh, let me practice for a little while and get back to you in a couple weeks. It's not something I'd want to teach right away because I wouldn't want to look foolish. I will watch the video from Bruce Springsteen at the Super Bowl though because that was one of the best knee slides ever when he slid right into the camera. Um, so I'm going to start there as my lesson video. Um, I'll get back to you Larry on that. 
I'm very bad at skipping strings. Yeah, that's something, again, everyone has kind of their strong points and their weaknesses. So if that's something that you're not that great at right now, just start slow and start simple and then build it up. I even like to play my scales with string skipping when I'm practicing some scalar things. And you could, again, I keep coming back to the one, two, three, four. You could string skip with that. Just skip a string and then come back to the string you skipped and so on and so forth. But if I'm playing like a major scale, maybe I don't want to just play right up and down it. Maybe I want to throw a little string skipping in there and add a wrinkle or just kind of twist your ear or work on your picking. So anything like that, yeah, string skipping's great. Um, anything can be practiced with string skipping. Just take what you're already doing and incorporate that into it. Uh, let's see. Rock around the clock solo. Oh man, I wish, I'm gonna learn that. That's a good idea. Um, I know the solo you're talking about. It is a great solo. I don't know it currently, but I bet it, it, is, pro it is a great workout. You're right. That is a good one. Uh, let's see. And you guys are all about the picks today. That's cool. Um, why don't you more eyes play the Squire mini strats? Have you guys ever played a, a mini guitar? It's crazy. You could bend like four whole steps on um, on a mini guitar. The strings are so loose. It's awesome. Yeah, I recommend playing a mini strat. Pretty cool. I just watched Bruce at the Super Bowl. He was not holding a guitar. It doesn't count. Oh, he wasn't holding his guitar. I didn't remember that. I just remember he slid knees on his knees and he hit the camera. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, that's that's a great introduction on practicing your knee slides. Do it on a slick floor. I'd hate to see everyone with scraped up knees at their next gigs. Or maybe just do it in your jeans because everyone likes ripped jeans, so just like rip them by practicing your knee slides. I'm working on pulling notes from the G major and pentatonic scales to form melodies. Yeah, cool. I love, I, like I said, I like taking exercises and instead of just doing like a static one, two, three, four, which is good for some things and I still do it, but I like to kind of give it some kind of musicality so it has some kind of value where I'm, I'm getting something out of it rather than just the exercise itself. So yeah, G. G major, I, I mean unlimited. I don't know what you're currently practicing, but yeah, anything that to take melodies. Um, one thing I was just working on yesterday that I, I wanted to start practicing that um, I was coming up with little ideas, you know, to, to show you guys for some accuracy as I came across. Um, when I did the live stream last time, we started got talking about ninths um, because that's one of my favorite sounds is the nine. So I took a power chord, G major power chord, and just added the ninth above it. And then I thought, well, what if I just kept building that across the strings and then back? That might be a good exercise. So I took it G, then to D. And then I just went to A, and I just did a power chord. I didn't do a ninth on this one. And then you can think of that as an A power chord with a fifth in the bass, or um, an E suspended with a fourth in there, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just an exercise. And then I would come back. So that's kind of a cool thing that I took um, just thinking of G is that I wanted to kind of try and make some kind of melody out of it. Uh, so yeah, that's very cool. Uh, make melodies out of everything. Uh, alternate picking and arpeggio runs. Okay, so this is something that I was going to do a lesson on and I'm still currently working on building it up myself, but here's what I'm thinking on alternate picking and arpeggio runs. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up because I really don't sweep pick. Um, it's just something I never practiced, I guess. Uh, maybe I should, but 
I just never got into just going up and down the chords. And, and there's lots of guys that do it really musically. And then they take sweep picking and they incorporate scale runs in the middle of it and all kinds of great melodies. It's just something I never got into. So the actual sweeping, um, I never really got deep into it. So it's just something I never... So what I wanted to do is take the arpeggios and instead of sweeping them, um, because it's not really my personal style, is I wanted to take the arpeggios and practice alternate picking through them. And um, you could get it up pretty fast. Uh, Steve Morse is like the king of that, alternate picking through arpeggios. It may not, and it's not gonna have the same sound as alternate picking, because, or um, sweet picking, because that's a real fluid. But what I wanted to do was take the arpeggios and just take an A, A minor, G major, F major, and then E major. So like a harmonic minor. And I wanted to come up with some kind of exercise to help me practice picking through arpeggios. Um, so what I came up with was a little thing. Now I don't have it up to speed. I just, I just um, started working on that the other day because I thought it would make a really cool lesson. And so alternate picking in arpeggio runs, that's kind of uh, something I started. So I have a little bit of the scale at the end of it is first I'm just picking through an A minor arpeggio like this. And back up. Sorry, what I'm doing is going down first from my, I'm hitting the, uh, the fourth in there. So pinky's gonna start here. And then once I hit this, I'm going straight down and back up. And then going back up. And that's one segment. So A minor would go. And then I just take the same thing to G major. F major, but what's different about F major is because for right now I'm sticking strictly in the key. So when you get to F um, in a major key, the or a minor key when you go down, is it's going to have a raised fourth. So instead of being able to do, it's going to have a that this note instead of like the G was here, I'm gonna have to use my third finger. So when you're in um, a key is when you go to that chord, uh, when you drop down, is it's gonna have a raised fourth. So anyways, that's, that's getting off topic, but this is just a picking exercise. And then I go back to a major E. So that's just something I came up with picking through arpeggios, which I like to do. So that's something, um, Hopefully I'll have a, a cool lesson on that soon, but that's something I just started working on. I'm glad you brought that up. It's kind of something I'm working on. I'm hoping to get it a little faster, but I got to get the metronome out first. So great question. Um, that is how I think of alternate picking in arpeggio runs is I'm throwing little bits of the scale in on the high E. That's kind of my scale run, and then I'm doing the arpeggios around it. So if you have any more questions on that, let me know. I hope that answered uh, what you were talking about. But you can obviously, like I said, take arpeggios, and um, a lot of guys will use them very melodically, even though they're fast, and they'll throw in little bits of scales at the end, like if I just had an A minor. Again, just kind of... Um, Messing around within the arpeggios and adding some scale tones in there. Uh, let's see.
yeah, getting out of the box. That's one of my favorite things is kind of you have your comfort zone. And when you're playing, say, in a live situation where your brain, you don't want to be thinking about what you're doing is you're just doing what's coming naturally. But when you're at home just kind of practicing, I love to challenge myself and do things that are really awkward uh, personally. So maybe for me, I should start working on sweet picking because I'm really, it's really never been in my vocabulary. Um, and it would, it would definitely be a slow process. Um, yeah, muting the sweet picking, that is uh, the hardest part. The pick flowing, yeah, that is, definitely is the hardest, hardest part. Do you only fret the string just heavy enough to sound a clear note? Uh, yes. Thanks for that question, Lonnie. I do because two reasons is the first reason is if you push too hard, you're going to push the note sharp. So let's just say I had uh, just an A note. So I'm hitting it. Now if I pushed really hard, listen to how sharp it goes. I'm not moving the string at all. All I'm doing is putting a lot of pressure on it and I'm really pushing the note sharp. So the first reason that you only want to apply as much pressure as you need is because you want to be in tune. So don't push it sharp. And the second reason is kind of a two-parter, I guess, is first of all, why work harder than you have to and put on any extra, any extra mileage on your fingers. And the second reason is when you're moving either from chord to chord or you're doing a lead line or something, you want to be able to move freely. And especially if you're playing a little faster, is you don't want to slow yourself down by having all this pressure. So yeah, the lightest touch you could have with your left hand is as much as you want to use to get the note cleanly. So one thing that I like to tell people to practice, especially when they're just beginning and maybe they can't even fret a note yet, is take the note with no pressure, so you're going to get nothing, and slowly push down until that note becomes clear. You're going to go through some buzzing and things. There it is, and I'm honestly barely pushing it. Now, if you if you push too light, you're going to get buzzing and muting like stuff like that. So you got to find the balance. But yeah, just a nice light touch because when I'm um, doing faster runs and things like that, if I'm pushing hard, I'm really slowing myself down. I don't I don't. There's no need for it. You're just working harder than you have to. And you're not getting anything in return except maybe a note that's out of tune and you're having a lot more trouble moving around the fretboard. So I hope that helped, Lonnie. Great question. Uh, where else were we? Yeah, who else works on sweet picking as well? Good. I am going to start working on sweet picking and hopefully next time I see you guys, I'll have some progress for you. Uh... Looking on how to do the lick uh, Neil Giraldo does for Pat Benatar. I don't know that, I'm gonna go listen to that one. I don't know that I've heard that specific song, that's cool. He's a great player. Let me listen to that tune. Uh, Joe, great to have you, thank you. I hope you have a great day, thanks for stopping in. Uh, do I have, let's see, I'm going to learn that. Thanks, yeah, absolutely. So building on, um, again, just this whole episode, I kind of wanted, we wanted to be about pick accuracy. Um, and again, that can come with speed. And so all the things we talked about, like the one, two, three, four, and all that, that those are great non-musical building blocks to be able to just increase speed. Um, it's almost like um, when you're exercising, you know, maybe you could bench press 300 pounds, but you're more so doing the bench press so that you have the strength to do other things. So that's kind of the way I think of it with guitar is when I'm doing an exercise that maybe isn't so musically interesting, I'm doing it for the reason that when I want to play something musically interesting is I have the tools to be able to do it. So, so far today, um, if you guys have just joined us, we talked about a lot of accuracy tips and ways that you can improve that and we're talking about gaining accuracy quickly. And I agree that these exercises can help you get there quickly, but you don't want to progress quickly. 
So my preferred method of practice is start at a snail's pace where if I'm working on a solo or a lick or anything, is it might not even, you might not even be able to tell what it is it's so slow. But then I get it under my fingers, I get the metronome going, and I slowly build it up from there. And like I'm gonna do with that arpeggio thing. Um, but, and then build it up. So with accuracy and speed, it's all about cleanliness of the pick and the left hand and the synchronization of both hands. Because there's nothing worse than having a cranked amp that's nice and distorted and then going to play a lick and just having it be total um, like mush and you're only hitting half the notes. So you just want to take it slow and be able to do it cleanly before you get up. So we talked about all kinds of alternate picking through chords. And we talked about moving it around to different chords. And then we also talked about a couple ways you can use arpeggios to improve your alternate picking accuracy. You could use um, alterations on the one, two, three, four pattern to um, improve accuracy. And you could skip strings. You could alternate strings. Anything that's going to be awkward for your pick, I kind of like. So something like that I might want to practice and just start building up and maybe move it all over. Uh, and again, come up with your own kind of ideas and things like that about, uh, about picking. Thank you. Oh, good to see you. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Glad, glad you made it. Have a great day. Um, if there's any other questions, feel free to keep them going. Um, I think we got a, a little bit, just a few more minutes probably with you guys. Um, I'm glad everyone stopped by. Thank you so much for stopping, and thank you to Eric for having me back to take over the guitar show. Uh, we hope to see soon. Always love the... Always love to see Eric doing the guitar show and all the lessons and things, so keep an eye on that. And again, if you're just joining us, in the description for this video, there is a link uh, to a small snippet, a single lesson um, that I did from a larger course that I did on speed picking. And it's not, not just for speed picking, that's the bulk of it, but it'll also improve your accuracy, and it'll give you some ideas on how to break out of the box. Um, mainly pentatonic boxes. I gave some ideas on extending the boxes and things like that because I love pentatonics, but um, as we know, staying in one box can sometimes get a little stale. So I had some things there on extending it. But check out the link and you'll get a free lesson and the course will be out shortly. So be on the lookout for that. Um, what is your favorite Ace solo? Oh man, um, Ace Fraley is so cool. What is my favorite Ace solo? Oh man. My favorite Ace song probably, and probably because of the live version on Kiss Alive 2. Is it Alive 2 that he does Shock Me Live and he does the whole solo and, and everything? Um, that's a great song. My favorite solo. Man, I'm gonna think about that. I mean, the, the live solo he does in Rock and Roll All Night is really cool, but his signature lick that he does. <laughs> When he does those pentatonic things, <laughs> just thinking about it makes me laugh. He's just he's so so cool. Is when he does those little repeating things that are just like we were just talking about being in the box. So I'm trying to think of the rock and roll night solo kind of. when he does that he does that that stuff kind of a lot it's really cool if I had to pick if you're gonna make me pick right now shock me it's on kiss alive too isn't it I'm pretty sure it's on the second um, alive shock me my favorite a solo on record probably my favorite a song it's been a long time a D in there. Anyways, it's been a long time, but yeah, shock me. 
Uh, just don't plan on anything being quickly when first learning. Yeah, it is going to take a long time. That's, that's one of the things that I really like to hammer down. By the way, um, thank you for that ace question. I love KISS and I love ace, but uh, shock me is the answer. Final answer. Um, prepare yourself for it to take a long time. Yeah, it is speed and accuracy. Yeah, as much as two, it's never ending. I mean, I've been working on speed and accuracy since I started just because I love the style and it's a never ending thing because you could have the technique of playing fast, but then there might be a new wrinkle that you can't play fast because it's a different finger pattern or it's, it's a different um, scale pattern or something. So yeah, it is never ending and it's slow. Uh, thank you for taking the time. Absolutely. I'm just as much on this learning journey with you guys. And that's the best thing I love about these live streams is being able to interact with you guys because I learn just as much from you guys as hopefully um, you can get something out of the things that I'm showing too. Um, is anytime you guys have a chat going in the comments and everything, I learn just as much from you guys. And you guys, I think when people talk about guitar is they make you think about things you didn't think of. Like someone asked me earlier if I was anchoring my pinky. And I, I do sometimes now that I'm thinking about it, but it's something I didn't think about before. And maybe it might be in the back of my head. Uh, Detroit Rock City, final, final answer. Yeah, Detroit Rock City is a good one. Yeah. Man, it's been a long time. Yeah, I'm gonna learn that one again when I go home. Uh, yeah, love Kiss. Guitar is practice, just like, yeah, it is. And yeah, you will never really master it. Um, I agree. There's always something new to learn. It's never ending and everyone kind of has their own place, I think. So if you listen to, it doesn't matter. We were just talking about Ace Frehley. You listen to Ace, he's got his own thing. And maybe even if it's not, you know, like this rocket science thing, it's rock and roll, but maybe a jazz guy that has his own thing that's also amazing and beautiful, maybe he can't get the feel of just like some simple pentatonic. I mean, you know, there's an attitude there, but then on the other hand, getting into jazz is like a whole thing, and maybe, so no matter how hard or simple something is, it's definitely hard to master. So I agree. Well, ladies and gentlemen, guitar geeks, I'm so glad you guys joined us. Um, I look forward to doing this again, and again, if you haven't yet, please check the link uh, that's um, in the description of this video. We have a little free lesson from a course that I did that's going to be coming out soon that's going to help you master some picking accuracy, speed, and things like that. Um, so I'm really glad you guys are here. I had a great time. Larry, thank you. Good show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad you guys are here. I look forward to doing another one. And I guess uh, I'll do a little jamboree on the way out here. Uh, maybe in the kiss stylings, as now I'm in the mood for some civil rock and roll. So I will see you guys next time. And Eric, we look forward to seeing you soon. And thanks to Jeff and the team behind the camera. Thanks to the guys behind the camera. Mike and Chris, um, keeping it going every time. And I wouldn't look this good if it wasn't for them. So yes, thank you. Thank you for the information. Oh, guys, thank you. I'm so glad. Um, I hope you guys got something out of this and I look forward to, to spend some more time with you. So without further ado, I'll just take you out with a little rock and roll. <laughs>